No one can make an intelligent decision without being properly informed. This is why this world like wants to control the see. media. This is why media hype can take you up, take you down. So you don't know anymore who's really good because the media can make a wicked man look good and make a good man look evil. That is why. Saddam keeping my eye on Clinton watching each move he makes Cause every slither he takes sort of reminds I'm tripping, I'm tripping <laughs> So again, good afternoon. You're watching a special edition of the Final Call News Hour. I am your host, Herman Mohammed. Today we are having a simulcast with our beautiful sister from On Purpose with Vicky, uh, Sister Vicky X. Yeah, yes, Godzilla, alaikum, peace, sir. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now today we're we're coming out of. Uh, we're gonna get started. Because uh, we have a very, very special guest. Yes, but let me show you the latest edition of the Final Call News Hour, or Final Call News Paper, excuse me. Which reads <laughs> Remembering Louis Farrakhan Jr., mm. brother, believer, father, friend, and soldier. Yes. And of course, this is an issue that covers the Janaza service of our dear. Beloved brother who passed away recently, Brother Louis Farrakhan Jr., the son of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and and uh, Mother Khadija Farrakhan. May Allah be pleased with yes. our brother. Um, today, like I was saying, we have a very, very special guest. So we're going to do things a little bit differently. On the line, we have a beautiful brother who hails from the great city of Atlanta, GA. All right now. Georgia. Jo <laughs> Hit that no brother. <laughs> and uh, our brother, uh, his name is Brother Marcus Muhammad, and he and his beautiful wife, Sister Cecilia, they deal with uh, black male-female mm. relationships. Yes. Um, yep. He's been doing it for a, a, a great while. I, we got him on the line. Yes. Brother Marcus, are you there, brother? I am here, my brother. Thank you so very much for allowing me this opportunity to share a few words with your listening audience. Praise be to Allah. Yes. Now, Brother Marcus, I touched on a little bit um, what you deal with, it, but if you could, um, you know, just let us know uh, about you, yourself, and the work that you're doing in the great city of Atlanta and uh, what you're doing with regards to black male female relationships yes but brother just before you do i want to greet my audience as well pbradiolive.com you're tuned in right now to on purpose with vicky radio broadcast radio podcast the nation's hottest radio show a very special guest that we have on the line with us today as our dear brother herman uh, muhammad just said to us herman muhammad brothers and sisters is simulcasting his show with ours today we're so very pleased that the final call a newspaper, the Final Call News Hour um, internet show is on with us today. Uh, our dear brother Marcus Muhammad, brother Marcus Muhammad is with us, and we're going to be talking about uh, courtship, we're going to be talking about being single and married and the importance of the black family inter alia. And we are joined also with our very, very special co-host, Mother Dilly. Mother Dilly, want to give a quick shout out to our yes, listening audience? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show today. Yes, indeed. So here Thank you. Thank, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So um, we're, we're pitching it back to you, Brother uh, Marcus Muhammad, who's on the line with us from Atlanta, Georgia. Talk to us today. Well, sister, let me say to both of you, thank you all for the opportunity to be on your wonderful program as well. We are so honored to have this opportunity. 
opportunity to share any words of inspiration and guidance with you. I hope that what we share to, with you today will be of help to you and will be comfort to you in what you're trying to do. Yes, Absolutely. Sir. So again, Brother Marcus, um, if you could, man, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, of course, the work that you're doing um, yes. in the great city of Atlanta and on behalf of our nation, on our nation of Islam. And uh, what was the inspiration behind it? Yes. Well, let me say I'm so very thankful that God has blessed us over these years to do a great work that is starting to get a lot of attention now. And I thank for the blessing that given to us. Uh, in divine leadership and Minister Farrakhan, he allowed us to wear the name The Marriage Keepers because uh, he saw in me and my wife that we were doing a work that is keeping marriages across the nation of Islam and around with our people in general. And we are very thankful for that. Uh, we call ourselves the marriage keepers. I met my wife uh, about 27 years ago. Yes, sir. Uh, we were high, we were high school sweetheart, and she allows me to still call her my boo. She has not, <laughs> she, has, <laughs> she hasn't kicked me to the curb yet, and I thank her so much for that. Yeah. Uh, she is not here. Yeah, she unfortunately had to work. She is not on the line with us, but I do want y'all to know that. For 25 years, she has allowed me the privilege of calling her my wife. Mm -hmm. And I thank her because I know that I had so many deficiencies when she married me. I was young. I was very immature. And I thank her for her patience and her love because if you're going to work with any black man in 2018, it's going to take those two words, patience and love, if you're going to reform him, if you're going to change him, if you're going to allow him a chance to grow into the man that you are looking for and desiring in your life. And so she has done that for me, and I thank her for doing that. And that's why at the uh, 2018 marriage retreat, we are going to try our best to do what we've always done. What we, we do at the marriage retreat uh, and this is a celebration of love that we're having this year, we are trying to get couples all of America to join us in Jacksonville, Florida, and we're going to do the 8th Annual Marriage Retreat because we got to get back to loving each other and loving God first. If we're going to be successful, we're going to have to love God again in our lives. And I thank him for giving us time to get our act together in marriage. And I, I thank him for allowing us to see growth and see changes in one another that are satisfactory enough to continue and to go forward in our marriages. And I thank him for all of the time that he's given us to try to work things through. Because it takes time to work things out in a marriage in 2018. Yes. And if you're trying to be married, if any of you out there are trying to be married, I ask that you give your spouse time. You know, the greatest day in my marriage happened about five or six years ago when I was in my 20th year of marriage. Mm -hmm. In the 20th year of marriage. Wow. I had, I had had enough. I was tired. I was thinking that this was it, that we were going to maybe get divorced. Mm. I was thinking it was over with me and my wife. Wow. And I told her, I told her for three hours, she just allowed me to talk. And I, I said to her, all the things that I was dissatisfied and disappointed with in the marriage, and she allowed me to go on until she couldn't take it no more. Right. Wow. And she said, at that point, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm through with you, Mark, and I'm through with you. Mm. And she started thinking about what I was saying and the passion with which I was saying it with. And she said to herself, like I had said earlier, that I've got some changing to do on my own. Oh. See, marriage reveals who you are, not who your partner is. It reveals who you are. Right. Because you go through so many ups and downs. You go through so many challenges in marriage. And you don't know whether you should continue with this because you're revealing for yourself. Wow. And so she saw that. She had some changing to do, 
And I knew that I had cash to fill. And we took the focus off of each other and what each other was doing wrong. And we began to work on ourselves. Mm. Because Mary teaches you to work on yourself. Yes, so many of us in 2018, we don't want to work on ourselves. We're focused on everything mm. but ourselves. Mm. And so I thank God that I'm here and I'm able to talk intelligently. And I tell you, my brother, my sister, my family, mm. that we have got to work on ourselves. We've got to learn to love again. Even though we were hurt, even though we didn't know exactly how to love each other, we are learning. And it takes time to work on yourself and to learn how to talk to each other and to treat each other in a civilized way, in the best way, and that's the process. And that's why we call marriage a process. You know, a lot of people say they've been married for 30 years. I've been married for 40 years. But, you know, the minister said to us, he said, don't say that you're married. Say that you're in the process of becoming married. Mm. Because it's a process. It's a process, process to marriage. And I don't think that we can really say we are one until we become one with our creator. Somewhere along the line, we lose sight of who God is. Wow. And that's what I think happened to marriage. We lost sight of who God was and the power that he possesses to change the reality under which we were living. And so I thank him for his love and his patience and his kindness to me, a sinner. I thank him for loving me enough to give me another chance. Yes, sir. That's how I would answer your question, my sister. My brother. Oh man, beautiful, beautiful. And brother, let me say, Powerful. Man, um, listen, there, there's really a need for this man in regards to black male female relationships, mm -hmm. and uh, in regards to just marriage in general. And and one of the things that you just said, man, was was key. Um, and that is, you know, our our uh, commitment not only to one another, but our commitment to God. Come that on that now. we're making that promise before God and a lot of that is is lost on people when it comes to uh, marriage now I, I got I got the a flyer of the marriage retreat up which happens on August 16th through August 20th and you said in Jacksonville Florida um, tell me a little bit uh, I mean you could touch on that God piece but what I also want you to touch on brother Marcus if you could is the uh, classes or the uh, the sessions that you'll have at this retreat. Yes. Okay, the sessions that we do are simply outstanding. I have to say that by God's grace. We have found a way to talk to believers mm. that is non offensive, non evasive about their marriage. Mm. A lot of us are very careful about marriage. We don't talk anything about our marriage to anybody. True. And so with the marriage retreat, we come at marriage in a team approach. And we try to talk to people and couples and ask them to look at that marriage in this day and time and ask yourself, what is your marriage? Mm. How did you do this? How did you do this year? Mm. And the wife gets to grade the husband and the husband gets to grade the wife in a court to communication. How was that, how did, how did that communication this year? Mm. Did they communicate effectively? Did they communicate properly? Did they, did they, did they clam up this year? Mm. Or did they shut down this year? Then we talk about duty and how did you do with the financial duty, with the emotional duty? How did you handle me emotionally? How did you handle me uh, sexually? And we definitely talk a little bit about sex because <laughs> wow. you keep oh yeah yeah I guess we was gonna leave that alone. Oh, no. oh, oh, yeah. We have a new book. <laughs> we have a new book that we came I uh, came out with at Savior's Day, and the book is called uh, what is it called? It's about sex, and the book is about uh, oh my God, I forgot the name. I'll, I'll get the name uh, for you before uh, we leave today. Yes, but sir. the book sexual life, and not, not, not necessarily getting into your bedroom, but talking about all the things that surround sex that we don't 
don't know enough about and we're not talking enough about. And that's why we get into so much trouble with it, you know. And so uh, we talk about uh, how did you handle me mentally? How did you handle me spiritually? Which is the main thing. It's a marriage diagnostic mm. that many couples need in their life, in their marriage, so that they'll know how they're doing. You mean you've gone 10, you've gone 15 years, but you've never asked yourself, how am I doing with you, the person? Right. See, this is the first opportunity some couples have had with diagnosing their own marriage. That's good. Right. Because, see, we, we go to somebody else to tell us how we're doing, but you got to tell your partner how they're doing. Your partner got to tell you how you're doing. That's, right. That's the best way you can find out how's it going. That's right. What is being married to me like for you? What do you find being married to me is like? Mm. Wow. We have never asked these questions, the history of our marriage. Mr. Bob Muhammad, who is the international representative of Mr. Farrakhan, he was sent to the marriage retreat by Minister Farrakhan, he told me. Mm. And he came to stay with us for exactly one day. He said, I was going to see what y'all was doing, and I was going to get up off of it in one day. <laughs> I'd be able to tell him yeah. that y'all were doing this, y'all were doing that. Mr. Ibar said he stayed the entirety of our fourth annual <laughs> retreat. Right. Yeah. And the reason he stayed with us, because he said to us, you all were doing something I have never seen in 53 years mm. at that time of being the nation of Islam. Mm. Wow. You all had something going on Every couple in the nation of Islam needs. They need, and not just the nation of Islam, he went as far as to say black people in general. Right. Everybody needs what we're doing in marriage, in their marriage. And we have gotten help over the years because now we have this year coming to the marriage retreat, Minister Patrick Muhammad who is down there in the beautiful city of Miami. He is a regional minister. We also have Minister Tony Muhammad, yes, who has been with us for the last 30 years, and he is the regional minister of Minister Baca out there in the West Coast. Yes, sir. And we also have Minister Sharif Muhammad, who is our southern yes, regional yes, minister, yes, and he's going to come along with his wife, along all these brothers who in their wild because they are going to talk to us about marriage in a way we have never heard explained. Mm -hmm. A brother, uh, Patrick, I look I forward to what he's going to tell us, because we're going to talk about the alert and the withhold that we have in our marriage. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are withholding in marriage because we've been hurt, we've offended, and so he's going to talk to us about that, along with his beautiful wife. Brother Sharif is going to talk to us about marriage in general, and, and, and did, we, did we really, are we thinking about our spouse's satisfaction? Mm. Or, are we just focused on, or are we just focused on our satisfaction? Because that's a lot of what's going on in marriage. Selfishness is choking out our marriages, Come on now. choking out our relationships. <laughs> And then we have Brother Tony, who is going to talk with us about communication in marriage and what we need to really understand about the way we communicate. And he does this phenomenal thing where he is going to help you to look at your spouse and you can't talk to them at all. You've got to look at them and then you got to notice things about your spouse too have never noticed, because you've never looked at them, really. Mm. And so he's going to take us through this process, and it's going to be extraordinary. And I just say to all of you, you do not want to miss this year's marriage retreat, yes, because sir. it's going to be extraordinary, once again, by the grace of God. And we want to help you in your marriage to understand that your spouse it's a beautiful person. That's right. And I think that you should take a look at them again. Mm. Yes, sir. I love it. I love it.
That's beautiful. Brother Marcus, this is so wonderful. And it's so important. And so we so appreciate your transparency. We know that the state uh, of black marriage and marriage in general is absolutely untenable in 2018. We understand that there is a war going on and the war is us. That is to say black men and black women. So to be sure, we have been programmed and conditioned for over 400 years of oppression. And so our marriage, our families have not had the proper attention, the proper support that is necessary. And we understand those of us that have been studying, that those of us that understands the ways of God, that marriage is the uh, foundation of the building of a nation. We call ourselves in the nation of Islam, the nation of Islam. I heard someone say, what, well, not the denomination, not the church of Islam, but what, the <laughs> right. nation right. of Islam. So what about that, sir? Why is marriage important, would you say? And I love the fact that you've already invoked the name of God, uh, the Supreme, in this, because doesn't he have something to say about the status of marriage and what it ought to look like? That's for you, my dear brother Marcus. Are you with this? Brother Marcus, are you there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can now, hear you now. Yes, yes sir. sir. Now, you, now. Okay, I apologize. No problem. Did you hear my? Go ahead. Say that again. I was wanting. I was wanting you to comment on the fact and tell us about what you perceive to be the current state of marriages in 2018 basically why they are important and you've already invoked God's name in it what does God have to say about it and why is that important yes I think that's so important to find out God's position on marriage I don't think enough of us know that God is interested in our marriages mm. I think that we it's a sin that we, we place God right here for uh, a passenger or, or or something we can put he, we can put him on the table at, at Christmas time and doing doing Thanksgiving we can acknowledge him a little bit and and, and then you know get up off of it you know we don't need you no more God and we call on him when we're in trouble and and that's how we know God we know of him as a trouble God but mm. God is not the, it's not just wanting to be known when we're in trouble when we're having situations God wants to be known all the time when we are, are doing well and then when we are prosperous. God has blessed us to be prosperous. And we want to call on him in that time too. See, this retreat is not just for people who have been, uh, 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 you know, going through a rough time in their marriage. The retreat that we're doing is for people who have also been very blessed in their marriage, who know mm. how to do it, how to, how to be very successful. Mm. In their marriages, we want to find out how did you do it. We want to find out from you what, what happened that you were successful, and that's what we want to find out with that. Because we we don't we, we don't want people to think that we have just a relationship with God in the good time. That's we right. want to know that God is with us all the time. That's right. And we want to bring him back into our marriages. We want to bring prayer back into our marriages. Yes. We talk and we have special husbands only sessions. We have special wives only sessions where husbands get to talk to other husbands about some of the challenges that they're facing in their marriage. Mm. And wives get to talk about some of the challenges that they're facing in their marriage. So if your husband is an idiot, a jackass, then you can say that, <laughs> you know, because the sister's there to help you. That's right. The brothers are there to help other husbands to see some of the errors of our way because we have been wrong in our marriages and we got to have somebody tell us that, you know, how to get right. That's right. That's right. That's what we right. Wow. That right. is Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is absolutely so powerful, the importance of God and seeing that he's the one that created this beautiful and important and foundational institution. So talk to us today about what would you say? Give us two or three uh, 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 examples of things that a person right now can do that's in 
what they perceive to be a troubled marriage. And even if it's not a troubled marriage, what advice, what are two or three things would you tell us right now are important to do right now in marriage? What I would like to say is that this retreat is going to be so, I guess you could call it, it's going to be something that you've been looking for all of your life. Mm. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to say to our brothers and sisters is that marriage does have hope and that we are trying to help you see the power of God to transform your marriage in whatever you're going through. A lot of us have given up. A lot of us don't think that marriage works it anymore. Mm-hmm. But I want you to know that marriage is worth it and that you didn't get married to fail at it. That's, That's what a lot of us, we don't know that God don't want you to fail. God right. wants you to succeed. But yes. he wants you to succeed at at being successful at marriage, a lot of us don't know that God wants your marriage to work, but you got to do it his way. His way. It's mm-hmm. not going to be successful your way. It's going to be successful his way. And God has a way to do marriage. Like he does have a way to do everything. But we got to find what his way is. Yes. And that's why we're bringing the three ministers Tell the minister to talk to us, yes, to God. give us a sense of what's going on, to get God's perspective on this thing. And I think that once we find that out, we're going to be so happy to find out the way I've been doing it is not exactly right, and I knew it wasn't right, mm. but I'm so happy that God still mm. blessing me to learn and to know more about marriage that's the thing that i think all of us are going to be very very happy about you know that's that's what i would like to say my sister yes sir and brother marcus um i wanted to ask because you you know you said so much dear brother Mm -hmm. and um you know we know and understand that you know being that we've been raised in the hells of north america so to speak come on that Many of us, you know, we grew up in broken homes. Right. We grew up in spaces and places where we have not seen proper male-female relationships. We have not seen marriages um, that thrive. That's right. um, and so we modeled the behavior that we grew up mm-hmm. watching. That's right. Um, what does the, uh, the retreat uh, how how does the retreat and, and, and those speakers that you have, how, how do they address those types of issues or do that? Brother Marcus, you there? Go ahead. Well, I'm trying to hear what you're saying, and I'm sorry that it's a little noisy here where I'm at. Okay. Well, what did you just say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That question. Yes, sir. Let me, let me say it again. I was saying that... Um, you know, we've been taught and trained in a certain way in this country. We've, we, we, a lot of us were brought up in spaces and places where we didn't have a proper uh, model for black male female relationships. A lot of us were brought up Absolutely. in broken homes. And so my question was, uh, what uh, happens at the retreat? How do the the student ministers and, and those presenters? Is there something that? Um, that they present at the retreat that address those issues and help us to get to those root causes as to why we um, behave that we behave in in our relationships. That's right. Absolutely. The main thing that I want everyone to know is that the magic happens in marriage, in the relationship, when you talk with your wife, your husband. That's the real magic. Those are the people that we got to get together, that we got to talk more about, the husband and the wife. And you are talking about what happened with y'all. What did you see in him that originally attracted you to him? And what did he see in you that originally attracted him to you? A lot of men got issues with their wife that they don't know how to even 
even talk to her about mm. because we set so many walls and barriers up to communication mm. that prohibit dialogue. We don't want to talk to each other no more. And that's one of the things. We had a couple who came to our retreat three years ago, four years ago, who they had had major trouble in their marriage and they didn't know whether they could make it or not. To be honest with you, they did not know. Coming to our retreat, and the couple happened three or four days before they came to our retreat, and she was the wife wasn't coming. She said, nope, that's it. I can't do this anymore with this man. Right. And I, she called me. She said, that's it. I can't do it, Marcus. And by the grace of God, she came. And the first day, they was not feeling what we were saying. They they wasn't feeling. They wasn't into it at all. But the second or third day, she began to understand what we were trying to say, what we were doing with her. And she began to believe again in the institution of marriage. That this is a God-led, God-filled institution. Mm. A lot of us, you know, we don't bring God into the marriage. And that's why there's so much divorce in our country. That's right. We take God as a pastime. We say God on the front end and maybe in the back end. <laughs> right. And we don't bring God into it. God is not at the root of it. He's not part of what we're trying to do with each other. And I just want to say that that's the wrong way to come at marriage. Because if I intelligently, as a man, put God between me and my woman, and if she doesn't intelligently, as a woman, put God between me and her, see, God is one, but we got to have him in the marriage. we got to acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him, mm-hmm. and you will be successful. Mm. That's right. That's what the scripture said. Yes. So we got to bring God back, and we got to ask him to please help us to be successful. Because I, I can't be successful with my wife. I didn't create her. Right. Mm-hmm. God created her. So for me. So if I'm having a problem with her, I got to go to God and say, well, God, you know, help me to understand your creation here. You created my wife. I didn't create her. Help me be successful with her, please. You gotta ask God in the proper way to help you to be successful with your spouse, with somebody you didn't create, your, with your husband, somebody you didn't create. You gotta ask God to please help you. And so that's where the magic is in doing the marriage retreat. We have speakers, yes, we have this way and that way, but the magic happens when you and your spouse decide that your marriage is worth effort. That maybe you are putting in the effort that marriage can A lot of us have it. A lot of us think that magic, mag, um, marriage magically happens. It gives itself. It doesn't. you got to work as hard as marriage as you do for your job. That's right. Marriage is something that you got to work at. If you want to be good at something, you got to work at it. And a lot of us have not done the work, the necessary work (laughs) that marriage takes. You know, we have it. That's so good. That's so good. Talk to us a little bit about singles. We know that the marriage retreat, just for those who are just tuning in, we're listening. uh, We're talking to um, our dear brother from Georgia, brother... Uh, Marcus Muhammad, uh, and he and his lovely wife, Sister Cecilia Muhammad, um, are going to be uh, conducting their eighth annual and eighth annual marriage retreat in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, this is going to be, am I right, brother, August 16th through the 20th? Yeah, the 16th through the 20th of August. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And, and so- they, can go to, they can go to our website at www.themarriagekeeperkeeper.com. That's www.themarriagekeeper.com. There is a $200 registration fee, and that's what you have to pay in order to get involved with what we're doing. 
Absolutely. That helps us to pay for the room and everything else. Yes, sir. Again, that's www.themarriagekeeper.com. And it makes sense to me, even what you just said, even with the $200, you have to, the, the scriptures uh, say where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And if you expect to harvest in something, you have to be willing to invest. You have to be willing to sow. What's more important than sowing in your marriage the foundation of a nation, the foundation of community, the foundation of family, the foundation of peace, longevity, life, and quite, quite frankly, heaven on earth. So family, it's well That's worth right. it. <laughs> yes, sir. So dear brother, talk to us about singles. I know that you have an event, I believe now, correct me if I'm wrong, a third annual uh, social coming up in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. I believe that's with our dear brother, Willie Bahamut, who was just on with us, and I was just on his show this past Saturday. Yep. Um, is that July 20th to the 22nd? Yes, that's July 20th to the 22nd. Yes, sir. Talk and it's going to be a wonderful uh, occasion where we get singles together to deal with why you're single and how to get married. And this really is for people who are ready to get married. Okay. You know, we want people who are looking for other people to get married to. We got a lot of single women, a lot of single men who don't know what steps they need to take in order to get married. And so we are doing a single activity weekend. This is not a single retreat. We're not trying to teach you necessarily all of the stuff that goes into being single and loving being single. We, ready, we, we know that many of you are ready to get married. And so we're trying to appeal to those people to come to the singles activity weekend. That's and it's going to take place in Louisiana, and we're going to be on a steamboat, oh my God, oh. and we're going to have wonderful meals, and we're going to really talk, because I don't want the singles weekend to be where you ain't going to meet no brother, so you want to meet your brother. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. Yes, yes. You know, and I want you all to know that. That's what we are doing, you know, the whole Opportunity is for every day you will be talking to brothers, different brothers, different men, all half uh, uh, so who are going somewhere. We we not gonna put you in front of no brothers who are not going nowhere. We are men who are out something, who are destined for something, and we want you all to meet them and to marry once you find a good. Yes, sir. Well, this event sounds like it's a very intentional event. Uh, an intentional, oh, yeah. an intentional. Yes, sir. Now, talk to us about singles. I, uh, it, in in this age of social media, and brother, um, I've been more active on it in the last several months than I have been all of my entire life. My mother would bear witness, and she's sitting over here. I had other people doing it for me when I did go on it, and when I was on it before. Uh, it was because I was influenced by others that were that they were telling me the importance and the power and the potential of social media. But I see while there is a lot of good, and that's why we're on it, because we want to put good content, and that's where our focus is on. But I've seen, even among some believers, the misuse of social media and uh, using it uh, when they're hurt in relationships and so forth and just kind of exposing folk. Um, some folks do it more subtly than others. Talk to us about singles. What are some things that singles, just two or three things that singles should be doing, perhaps some preparatory things, dear Brother Marcus, that singles ought to be doing, or some things that we should be aware of? Well, first of all, I, if I was a single brother, I would definitely be about the business of finding somebody who was compatible with me and who could take me to the next level as I take them to the next level. I would be everywhere that Muhammad was trying to work and show everybody that I was a person who was quality and I was a person that you should definitely be interested in because I am somebody that's worth knowing. Mm. Everyone who is single, you should make sure that everyone knows that you're worth knowing. That's what powerful. is it about you that's worth knowing? You wow. be everywhere. All the blog talk. If you go on my Facebook, and everywhere that there was something going on on Facebook, I would be, I would be talking about, I would be saying who I was. And this is someone so and I'm single, and I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm letting you know, you know, that, that I am a person that is ready for marriage, and I would be telling everybody, 
say about myself because you'll find that people who are quiet, a lot of us are quiet about our mm-hmm. our relationship, about our, uh, how do you say, uh, our, not marriage, but Status. we're quiet. You know, we, we don't want people to know um, what what's happening with oh, us. That's what I think it is. We, right. We're just very quiet, you know, and I don't know why. We're so quiet. We we don't talk enough about marriage, about what's going on, about what we're trying to do. I don't with I really but I do know it's two thousand and eighteen. Being quiet and meek and humble and not saying I don't want nobody to know that I'm single, no. Let people know that you're single and you're ready to mingle and you're coming to this, and you would have fucked your husband. <laughs> if I was a single man, I, I find this dude with a who could make this and I call her, I say, you, I want you right there. That one right there, I want to make you. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! I find him. I find him. Yeah. 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 I would not, I'm telling you, I would not waste time with, I don't know why people waste so much time with this life. It's going to happen, and that, it's not going to happen if you I'm not serious about it. It's not going to happen. You got to want marriage. You got to say it. You got to digest it every day. That's what we got to do if we want relationships in 2018. We can't be quiet and meek and humble about it. We got to let everybody know that we're about the business of marriage, and that's what we're trying to do. That is amazing. That's what I believe. Well, Brother Herman, what are your thoughts on that? And what are your next questions for our brother? <laughs> Well, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I wanted to say, brother. I wanted to say, brother Marcus, uh, with regards to that, you know, letting people know for the for the brothers and the sisters who are single, um, is there at the at these at this singles retreat? Uh, I know in the Nation of Islam, we're taught that we need to be qualified before we seek a husband or we seek a wife, and um, those qualifications are very specific. Um, do, does the retreat address those issues? If you said, it, does the retreat work out? Yeah, in terms of teaching brothers and sisters, especially brothers, though, that they have to be qualified before they seek a wife or seek uh, out marriage, that they shouldn't be, you know what I'm saying, broke as a joke, eating holes out of donuts, <laughs> holes in their shoes, oh you know. God. That they should at least have something before they show up talking about they want to get married to somebody. Well, I'll tell you this. You know, it's taken a lot of time. It's a lot of time. And I feel like brothers who sit around and sit around and sit around are going to end up sitting around doing nothing. (laughs) Being 40 years old, like we went to one city, and they had 15 brothers who were over 40 years old who had never been married. Wow. I mean, I was like, what? I ain't never been married, no children. Wow. And I'm looking at all these sisters in the nation who, who, who have children, who are this and who are that. Then what, what are we, what is, what's going on here? We've got to change this culture to one that we are, are pushing marriage every lecture. When I came to the nation of Islam, we were pushing marriage. Mm. And I mean, we talked about it every single week, every opportunity we had, and you felt like you were the oddball out if you wasn't married. Mm. That's, that's, when, that's when I came to the nation. And, and I felt like, you know, I need to go ahead and get married. Right. And because the, the culture was saying to me that, all the brothers are getting married. What's wrong with you? They shouldn't be married. That's what it was saying to me. That's my, my takeaway from it was, that she need to get you a white market. I don't care what you got to do. Find you somebody and find you somebody who is going to be a white material. We can sisters to look for brothers, but we don't teach brothers how to look for sisters. Mm. You know? And I tell you, you know, I thought just making BC, she got to have a few more qualifications than that now. Right. You know, <laughs> okay, you, know right. is, you know, if you are super educated as a woman, and you got a lot of education, well, I don't know if you need a brother that ain't got no education. Right. I don't, I don't know 
TV one who ain't got no education. He earns a lot, and you got to teach him every single thing as a woman. I don't think that that's going to work too well. Right. I think you want to be equal to you. <laughs> right. I do. I think that you need to find your brother who also got some education, who is somebody who is striving, who wants to do something and be something in his life, and he is already on the road. Not somebody who is, who, well, maybe somebody come along with a good plan. No, somebody who's already doing something, who got a plan, who is actively going about the business. I think we got too many people who are unequally yoked, and that's creating a problem in our nation. Mm. You know, you got two people who are, are not supposed to be together. They were together before our biological needs. They were together because of a real uh, uh, a financial need that, that it was somebody looking for somebody to help them and meet them morally, mentally, spiritually. They weren't somebody looking for that. They were looking for some kind of other thing, sexually maybe. Mm. But I don't think that that would work in this day and time. We gotta find people who are exactly where we are in terms of the mindset. Right. The mindset. That's what we wanna find people who have the mindset, the proper mindset in 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yes. That's right. Yes, sir. That is so powerful. We uh, just got about 10 minutes or so left, dear brother. Talk to us a little bit about, I know you're a businessman. Uh, talk to us about your business and uh, then get back to, again, your information, how we can reach you for these conferences. Yes, yeah, sir. That last part again, please. She was saying, talk to, talk to uh, us about your businesses and then um, how we can get, you know, just, just the information on the conferences again but she wanted to know about you and sister C cecilia's um businesses in atlanta you know we pushed do for self on the final call news hour and on purpose with vicky <laughs> well i'm gonna tell you this you know that one say she's been a great one of the greatest blessings of my life has been because i've been married to her and i i, I, I have no reservations in telling you that because that's exactly who she is for me. Yes, sir. And I tell you that, you know, we started counseling uh, about maybe five or six years ago. We counseled a great many people, and we have what we call the Wally Counseling Services. And the Wally Counseling Services are for people who are going through a little difficulty in their marriage, who can't see each other, who don't know how to do this marriage thing properly. Mm. And I tell you, it's been very helpful to a great many in our nation because we we know how to talk to each other. We know the great value in the person that you are talking to. Maybe you don't see him as a God. Maybe you don't see him as a God as well, but we do. We know who they are. And we speak to what's in them and the great power that's in them. And we try to unite them with you and you with them and bring God back to your marriage and your picture, what y'all dealing with. You know, because somewhere along the line, we can trace you all getting divorced or thinking about divorce to ego. Right. A lot of us are ego driven maniacs in 2018. We're an ego, we said ego driven maniac. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's speaking in most of us is not God at all. What's speaking in most of us is ego. Mm. And so we got to get the ego under control again. Then we got to talk love to each other. You know, what happened to us we stop talking love to each other? What happened to us is love is not part of our everyday vocabulary. Mm. What happened to us that we don't say I love you when you're going in and when you're coming out? What happened to us that we're like that now? Yes. See, we, we can't, we've got away from a lot of things that really... We make sense in our Muslim marriage. Mm. You know, we got to get back to what is a Muslim marriage? What is sort and hard in the way of our lot? If both of us are supposed to be Muslims here, we got to bring God back to our marriage and very simply, because he's left there, ego is edging God out. And I don't want to edge God out of my marriage. 
for God to be and take his rightful place in my marriage and he is the head of my marriage. Yes, sir. And I want everybody who is listening to know that we got to bring him back. I don't care who you are, who you are, bring God back to the picture mm. and ask him, oh, is he pleased with the way that you have been doing your marriage? Yes, sir. As a brother, and as a sister, you should ask that. Is God pleased with the way I'm handling my husband? You ask God for him and then you treat him like a dog. Mm. You ask God to bless you with a husband and now look at how you treat him. You got one from God. Mm. But how are you treating him? How are you treating the husband? Well, you ask God to give you a good woman. He gave you a good woman. Now how are you treating her though? Right. And we got to bring God and ask God those critical questions because he will answer us. Look at the condition of your marriage and you can see what his answer is. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want him to be pleased with me. I, I don't want him to frown on me. I want him to be pleased with me with the effort that I'm making on his behalf. And so we have those businesses the Wiley Counseling Services, we counsel personally, you know, because sometimes people come to us and they are really not going, they're not feeling that great. You know, things are not going right in their life. We personally counsel people who, who just need somebody to talk to. And we give them some good advice, some real skillful advice on what they can do, on how they can proceed in their lives. In a couple months, God willing, we're going to start a different kind of show. We're going to be doing the same show that we've been doing. And by the way, the show we've been doing has been so great because we've been talking about death. Mm. We're talking a lot about death and how people handle somebody who's about to die. Wow. And they know, you know, what do you say to them? What do you say to somebody who's about to die? Brother Tony came on, I show he did an excellent job with Minister William, and they talked to us about that topic, mm. you know. But we got to talk about death. You know, a lot of us, we, we, we may think that we're not going to leave here. Mm. But you have power over it if you would believe. Wow. You have a lot of power, a lot of say-so in your life over how you would die. So we are talking about that, and then we're going to move the show, God willing, by God's grace, to other topics that, you know, we don't talk enough about. But we have to if we're going to be successful. Mm. And so uh, the, the, uh, the, the thing that I would like to say is that anybody who wants our counseling services can contact me at 770-256-8856, 770-256-8856, and we'll be happy to set up this counseling session for you. Uh, and if you, again, you want to come to the marriage retreat, if you're thinking that you and your wife, you really need to talk. And if every time you're talking, it's an argument. Every time you talk, I mean, have you ever got to the point where you're so tired of arguing? I can't argue not another moment with you. Right. I want peace with you. I want to love you again. I can show you how to love her again, mm. how to bring the magic back to your relationship, and it will happen this year at the marriage retreat that we're going to do. This is the eighth annual marriage retreat. This is the foundation that you're going to need in your marriage to take it to the next level. We're going to talk about finances in a way that you have never heard before. It will be so uplifting, so inspiring to you to listen to what we're going to say. Not that I'm going to be talking, but we got people coming in who are specialized in this area and they can help us to really see that we need to get this thing together. And so that's going to all take place at the marriage retreat, the 8th Annual Marriage Retreat. And if you're single, please come to our single weekend. We're looking for brothers. We have a lot of sisters coming. God knows we're going to be plenty of sisters. So we need women to come to step up to the plate because... We want you to find you a tender bony, a bull thing, a black woman. We want you to find them. You want you love, you want to find love in your life, then you gotta find you a black woman to love you. And when the black woman loves, brother, you know R. Kelly sang that song, When a Woman Loves. When a woman loves, no end to her love loves 
you for real. And so I just want to say that I'm so happy to be on your program and, and to share all that I'm sharing. And I thank you all for listening to me. Yes, sir. Man, praise, praise be to Allah. And we are running up on time, Brother Marcus, but I want to uh, I want to show the people the, the information one more time. Mm -hmm. It's the and it's the national chapter of the Marriage Keepers present the 8th annual 2018 National Marriage Retreat. The theme is Let Us Build the Foundation for the Kingdom of God. Come on now. And it takes place right. August 16th through August 20th, 2018 in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, they have uh, marriage strengthening, auditing, communication skills, and drills. The most adult fun you have had in your entire marriage. It only costs a low, low price of one ninety nine ninety nine. Yes, that's right. And uh, for information, right. you can go to www.themarriagekeeper.com or call Brother Marcus, not just for this conference, but for uh, uh, marriage counseling as well, mm -hmm. at 770-256-8888. Five, six. Right. And you can get all the information from Brother if you have any questions. Man, it's been an honor, Brother Marcus. Yes. But before we get out of here, man, that's some heavy stuff you dropped on us today. Mm -hmm. But I got one question for you, Brother. And this is going to be a new tradition yeah. at the Final Call News Hour. So listen carefully. Top hip-hop artist of all time. And why? Uh-oh. <laughs> Who you groove to? I said top hip hop artist of all time to Brother Marcus, who you work out to and why? Mm. I would say the top hip hop artist of all time has to be Eric B and Rockem. What? <laughs> Whoa. When he comes in, as soon as his music comes on, I just got to stop wherever I'm at. And I just got to shut it down. My man is on the radio, or my man is playing his CD, and I'm telling you, he, along with, along with Karen one, along with Big Daddy Kane, I'm an old school hip hop head, and I'm going to tell you, the old school hip hop head shut it down every time, and you got to be old school it. if you from any school at all. You from any school, he said. I love it. I love it, man. Yes, I yes. love it. Old oh, awesome. school all day. Eric B. and Rakim, KRS, what? Okay. You heard it here on the final like, call. Okay. This hour. <laughs> yes. Tops are all time. Brother Marcus, man, it's, man, it's been awesome, brother. Oh, man, I, I thank you, man. Um, I love you, brother. I yes. love the work that you and your thank wife you. are doing. Yes. Um, I want you to keep thank on you keeping so on, man. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us this afternoon yes, sir. and uh we look forward man to the next time because this this is not gonna be the last it's not gonna be the last that's right thank you all so much i love you back and god bless you and look forward to seeing you all at the retreat or some, something we'll get together on to do thank y'all very much <laughs> thank you fam thank you thank Love you Bye. Bye. Oh, that's yeah, beautiful sir. how wonderful so that was our dear brother, Brother Marcus Muhammad. Yes. Well, that's right. That's right. That's right. Black male, female right. relationships, one on one. And, powerful. you know, we gave you the information for the retreat. Um, definitely check that out. Um, before we get out of here, I want to handle some some business. Yes. Of course, you've been watching the Final Call News Hour, and we're, we're partnered out with right. On Purpose with Vicky, Yay. Sister Vicky X in the building, Miss Pat, our beloved co-host. Yes, in the right. Picture Miss Pat real quick. Oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> How fresh! <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Yes. Um, let Let me tell you what we got going on in Denver. Um. There's not an address here, but you can come and hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. This coming Sunday, we'll be at the Aurora Public Library. That's okay. at Alameda and Chambers. The meeting's going to be at 10, 10.30 a.m. So I want to say 10. I say 10 a.m. Okay. This Sunday at the Aurora Public Library, Alameda and Chambers. For information and to make a donation to our study group, go to a star 2.com backslash NOI Denver study group and click that donate button man this is we, we do all of this for uh 
out of the love of our hearts. Come you on. know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody. We, we don't have no faith based Come on now. initiative money up in here. Come on, brother. This is the Vicky the same way. That's right, you know sir. We got, That's right. We hear it. PB Radio, Radio. Live. Yes, yes, and if sir. you don't know what the PB stands for, it's Proud Black. Black. You got that right. <laughs> yes, so, sir. Sister Vicky, anything to say before we get up out of here? Thank you so much for tuning in. Final Call News Hour family. Of course, PBRadioLive.com. We're going to get ready to take a break here. Uh, right after our brother signs off, it is an honor to be sure to connect with our brother Marcus Muhammad. He's on Facebook, but he's under Marcus, I believe it's A. Muhammad. There's several right. ones. Marcus but A. Marcus Muhammad. A. A. Muhammad, and then also you see all types of posts and ads to everything our brother talked about today. Uh, that way you can check him out and like, follow us as well. Just hashtag on purpose with Vicky or Vicky Dillard, whether it's uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Be sure to connect with us for good content and certainly with our brother Herman, which is what Herman. On Sup Facebook? Uh, uh, it's Herman Supreme Style Muhammad on Facebook. Yes. Or it's at Brother Herman on Instagram and Twitter. Yes, yes. So connect with us. That's wonderful. Assalamu alaikum, family. Praise be to Allah. And, and listen, y'all, uh, remember, man, if you don't uh, stand for hmm. something, you'll hmm. fall for anything, hmm. make sure you go. If you don't get your final call in the city, go to digital.finalcall.com. We yes. always got to mention that site. Remember, man, look, stay black, stay strong. Yes. We love y'all. Yes. Mwah, mwah, mwah. And we will see y'all <laughs> next time. We out. We out. Yes, 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 yes. No one can make an intelligent decision without being properly informed. This is why this world like wants to control the media. This is why media hype can take you up, take you down, so you don't know anymore who's really good, because the media can make a wicked man look good, and make a good man look evil, that is why.